feel like bionic woman or something. I'm like. What's up guys? <laughs> oh, I look exhausted. I am currently injured right now. <laughs> so if you guys want to get just straight to what this video is about, skip to you guys follow me on Snapchat. Snapchat saw that yesterday morning I got a pinched nerve in uh, my left shoulder blade and went up into my neck, my trap. My whole left arm was tingly. It was painful. <laughs> it was extremely painful. It's kind of like I have to do this motion. So Honey Buns is not going to be her normal crazy throwing every herself around because I can't. <laughs> so I'm going to be very stiff right now. It's going to probably be very interesting for you guys because you're used to seeing that crazy Jen. <laughs> yeah, Friday morning was terrible. Well, I got to the gym and I can't do anything. I, I, I've got to lay down and I literally was on the floor trying to keep it together. Uh, never felt that kind of pain before. Never felt that, had the experience that before. So it was the first time. <laughs> and I thank you guys so much um, for you guys on social media. I asked on Snapchat and Twitter, what do you do in those situations? And so many of you had great feedback and suggestions and I utilized a lot of it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it was the first time for everything. Never experienced a pinched nerve before. <laughs> I was literally crying. I was crying so much. Any movement I did was excruciating. I couldn't even drive my car home. I couldn't even carry my stuff. I had the, Zach had to give me a ride home. And then I had to sit up like this for a good period of time because if I laid down, I did get in a position like a fetal position on my left side was fine or laying on my back with my head slightly turned this way. But trying to get up, it was it was, it was hell. <laughs> so I tried to just stay up as much as I could possible and rest back this way. It wasn't comfortable. Uh, sleeping, I think I only got a few hours of sleep that night. Uh, so the thing, from all the suggestions and also from a few professionals, what I was advised to do was I need to bring the inflammation down. So not going to see a chiropractor or going to see somebody right away, I needed to bring the inflammation down, which what it is is you know you taking ibuprofen or motrin and lots of water and um, stretching out trying to do some stretches and resting and also doing hot and cold compressions so, uh, by the evening on friday i was feeling a lot better and um food diet diet eating a lot of foods that are anti-inflammatory not eating much processed sugary stuff i decided to stick with just <laughs> anti-inflammatory foods which my choice was going to be the berries was going to be coconut oil going to be olive oil spinach kale tomatoes taking rest that was the biggest thing was resting. Saturday was a little bit better. I'm able to move around. I'm able to record this video. <laughs> Tomorrow, my sister's a masseuse, so she's going to give me a full body deep tissue massage. And I know that's gonna do wonders. So and you know what? It happens to everybody. It happens to even the best of us. You can be patient, even though it's really, really hard for me to just sit here and not do anything. It's been really hard. It's been really tough. <laughs> now we're gonna get into the purpose of this video how to get rid of belly fat love handles how do you get rid of that how do you do it <laughs> so the first thing that I'm really gonna emphasize on guys is you cannot pick and choose on your body where you want to decrease body fat you cannot spot reduct body fat it's not how our bodies work if we could do that naturally then everybody would have the exact body that they wanted. The only time that that actually can happen is if you're going to the doctor, they're doing certain fat removing procedures on your body of where you want to take the fat out. If you want to decrease body fat, especially in your stomach, it's gotta be a full body thing. It's gotta be an overall thing and your diet and your training and everything has to be in balance with each other in order for you to achieve that. From my own experience through the years uh, and from learning my body really well, I tend to store a lot of fat, most of my fat, 
in my midsection and my lower back and then in my upper body area. In my fluctuations, that's the first place to gain and then the last place to lose. <laughs> I found specific ways to really keep that in check and all the information I've provided with all my videos, I, I apply all of that to my own self. Diet is going to be your biggest downfall, especially for losing fat in your tummy or your lower back. Now there's some of you that have had kids. Some of you that have extra skin or still have fat in that area from when you were pregnant. Now, uh, when you were pregnant, how your diet was at that time also plays a role with where your body is at now. I know a lot of women will stay on a pretty good diet and intake and not go crazy when they're pregnant and then there's others that just get cravings and then you just eat anything and everything and eat more than you should and you gain quite a bit of fat but have extra skin from either being pregnant or you did have extra weight and there's extra skin there it's different from person to person sometimes the elasticity in your skin based off your diet and based off how long the skin was stretched out for that's gonna it's gonna take time to come back from that and sometimes it may not. It, it, it varies from case to case. But a lot of people that have experienced having extra skin, they just get back on a whole nutrient-dense diet, giving their body everything they need, especially all the nutrients and minerals and vitamins that come from certain foods that are specifically for healthy skin <laughs> and bringing back that skin. Tighten up that tummy and tighten up that elasticity back in that skin. But if you're restricting too many things, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything for you. It's gonna be like, no, I'm just gonna stay stretched out. You have to find a balance again and come back from that. But but just having you know a well-rounded nutrient-dense diet is gonna help you 100 percent got stresses from work family life or about your physical image you got any stress going on and on top of that you're trying to train your little butt off and you're restricting too much in your diet your body's hormones are gonna go all out of whack your body's gonna stop producing that that fat burning hormone I've talked about this many many times and you may lose weight in a lot of areas but not in the area that you want which is gonna be your lower tummy and your love handle area. When I start to stress or I worry or something like that, first thing I notice that gets a little bit more puffy, my lower stomach and my lower back. Or if I'm not getting enough sleep, that's the first place I notice that starts fluctuating. <laughs> You're not gonna lose that body fat. Trust me, I've been there, been there many, many times. <laughs> Especially if you're doing everything natural, guys. If, if there's certain things that are going on in your life that are stressing you out and that causing too much stress, maybe you need to eliminate those things from your life or maybe you just need to make some changes. And sometimes you might be stuck in a situation that it's like you can't get away from it. It could be work, family, job, whatever. But there are things you can do to just kind of like modify them a little bit to relieve some of that stress. So nothing's impossible. Um, a lot of you I know do fairly good during the week and you stay on point but once Friday hits the three day weekend you go off for those three days it doesn't really balance it's not really about a moderation it's like man I work so hard during the week but I'm not making any progress because you don't really take into factor your weekends just because you're doing good for four days then you go off three days I mean your body's gonna be all over the place and it's and especially if on the weekends you're not either not eating enough or you're drinking or you're eating a lot of processed foods a lot of high sugar high fat high sodium a lot of that stuff I mean of course you're of course you're gonna be at a standstill the majority of us it's gonna be our tummy that's taking the taking the brunt of everything or the love handles <laughs> it's like for me personally if I have something off diet usually I stick to one meal I don't do three day weekend and do like six meals. It's one meal, but that's about it. And about being consistent. Uh, most of us aren't consistent. Most of us think we are, but most of us aren't. And I've been there, <laughs> I've been there. So the more you're consistent, the more results you're gonna get. <laughs> the reason most of us stay on diet during the week is because that's our routine, that's our schedule. We go to work, we have a set routine. The weekends, unless you have a set working schedule, most of us go off on the weekends because it's kind of like, woo, we're, we're, 
it's not routine so it's just about being consistent even when you're not on routine it's about making that part of your lifestyle and making it a habit when you're consistent and consistent every single day and every single week and you do have that cheat in moderation you're gonna start seeing more results in the areas that you want it's biggest thing that uh, probably doesn't get talked about enough in this industry in this fitness industry is synthetic stuff and I'm talking about sugar-free fat-free all of those things as much as they are saviors in a lot of situations especially if you want something but you're watching the sugar or the fat and I know this from my own personal experience especially when I'm prepping for something I usually go for those items but for a woman, a lot of that processed stuff will increase estrogen in women and increased est estrogen is going to cause fat storage. So that's why I stress so much about a whole nutrient dense diet, about going for whole foods. And you know, every once in a while, I put those fat free, sugar free things in there, you know, because you know, I'm human too. I want to enjoy that stuff. And when I want to enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy it. But then I also have to remember that if I am, that there are some consequences with that. Go for a whole nutrient dense diet as much as you can, keeping that in mind and just reminding yourself that. Now, if you're somebody who's like, I absolutely will not touch that stuff and you don't touch that stuff, that's great. It just, it's about each individual and what you want and how you want to do it. But at least you have this information and you can understand it a little bit better of why we are storing fat, why we can't get rid of fat in certain areas. So I think that's gonna be the biggest biggest thing in the industry is all the synthetic, all the process, all the fake sh crap in the industry. I mean, when we see sugar-free, when we see fat-free, we're like, yes, I want it, you know, but in the long run, especially for women, it affects us negatively. In order for them to get it fat-free and sugar-free, it has to go through a chemical process to remove that. Did you guys know that? <laughs> True story. If you think you're getting this amazing miracle product with no fat and no sugar, well, you're getting this other chemically processed items. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol. Those things are going to get you. A lot of people tell me that they enjoy having that. And they'll tell me I can't give it up, <laughs> which is fine. But I remind those people if you don't, that you might have some hindering in your progress if that's the case. Because it does dehydrate you, so it's gonna cause the water retention, if, especially if you're not drinking enough water, and then you're just gonna look puffy all the time. And then, you know, over time, you're gonna gain weight, or you're gonna hold on to your, uh, your body fat. <laughs> Alcohol, it can get stored as fat, or it can cause bloat. It can, a lot of people notice they get the thick bellies, especially those who drink a lot, they get that thick super thick belly. People ask me the question all the time, do you drink? And I don't. I don't care to have it. We went to Vegas this last week and that was the most I drank since New Year's. <laughs> and it's usually it's usually like one or two a year thing that I, I let loose a little bit. Preference, it's personal preference. Not only uh, I think not having alcohol is better for you physically and you know drinking just I feel like it interferes with my with what I do on a daily basis and so it's just it's not worth it to me uh, Zach quit drinking hard liquor um, about almost four and a half years ago so he doesn't even drink liquor he drinks beer or wine and even then it's only when we go do stuff <laughs> And alcohol can be a depressant, uh, is a depressant for a lot of people. My dad was an alcoholic for most of my life. He was not the, the functioning alcoholic. You know, I, I got to see the worst of what alcohol can do to people. So that's another reason why I'm just not really big into the whole alcohol thing. One here or there is fine, but most people don't keep track of how much they are drinking. And it adds up, it adds up each week. So it's gonna cause you to hold on to belly fat and love handle fat. <laughs> water, 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 water. <laughs> you're reevaluating how much you're intaking when it comes to alcohol. You're gonna have to sit down and you're gonna have to figure out, okay, I really want to have a tighter tummy. I really want to be healthier overall, like physically and, 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 and look good physically. So then you have to sit there and go, okay, 
you know what, I am gonna, I am gonna cut these things out. I am gonna lonely limit to this day or this day or that day. So you have to sit down with yourself and you have to decide what you want to do and, and what you, what it is that you really want. Fast food. So there are so many options now that are becoming healthier. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a lot of these restaurants out there, or, or drive through restaurants that are, you know, organic, or it's healthy, you know, it's salads, it's... But, you have to think deeper into a lot of these companies. A lot of these companies, they either mass produce their products, or their products are genetically modified. You're going to these fast food places, and you're getting these thinking, oh, I'm eating a chicken sandwich, or I'm eating a, a chicken salad. The meats, the veggies, the, they lack all the nutrients we need. They're almost like, I, I, I always joke and say it's like eating air <laughs> You're, or, or just a, a, a ball of chemicals. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it's true. We, it's, it's so true because most stuff is made for quick, the quick lifestyles, not the health. It's about getting it in, getting it out, getting these, you know, and money. You know, it doesn't come down to actual real health. If you're eating these things that are already lacking the nutrients, these food products that are being served to you through fast food, they're already lacking nutrients and a lot of them are just chemical or that you don't even know how it's made, how it's processed, the meat. Think about this is what you're eating. For a majority of women, it's gonna cause that estrogen to go back up. I mean, you're, you're, and you're lacking in nutrients, so your body's gonna be malnourished and so your body's gonna be freaking out. It's gonna be trying to store as much fat as it can because it is, it's, it's actually starving. You know, in some cases, you want fast food, you wanna eat it, moderation. But if it's something that you're doing consistently, it's gonna catch up to you. Most of us are so busy, so, so busy that we barely even have time to get a good amount of sleep. I know that for my own self. Because of my high energy, I feel like I'm, as soon as I get home, I, I, I gotta be productive, I gotta get stuff done. That's the, one of the, my biggest downfalls, is I do not get enough sleep. I probably get maybe four or five hours of sleep every day and I know I could probably be tighter in my lower tummy and in my uh, lower back but I know because of my lack of sleep it kind of holds me back in that area <laughs> but lack of sleep so many of us lack it you know we put too much on our plate and we don't give ourselves the proper amount of time to recover and that's being sleeping that's when the actual real recovery happens is when you guys are sleeping so when you don't give yourself enough of that, your body can't recover from whatever it is you were doing that day, from your workout, I mean, from anything. It's just coming down to structuring your day a little bit better, telling yourself to stop at a certain time of night and going to bed. And I struggle with that and I, I'll go, I'll do good for about a week and I'll be like, yeah, I'm in bed by 11. And then I go back to being in bed by 1, 1.30. And then I try to get up at seven o'clock every morning. Yeah. They say eight hours is what you should be getting. I would love to get eight hours, but at least within you know that t that seven eight hours is 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 good. <laughs> you know, some people are really good with that. They're like, oh, ten o'clock, I'm in bed. I know one of my best friends, uh, man, it's like clockwork, dude. She's at bed, sleep ten o'clock every night. I'm like, I wish I could fall asleep like that. Can can you share some of that with me? <laughs> You, you might be doing majority of those things and not even realize it, you know, or you are thinking it was an okay thing, but maybe you're doing too much of it. So it's just about reevaluating what you're currently doing, you know, taking a second look at, at, at your, your, your training regimen, your diet, sleeping pattern, the stress that's going on in your work and your, just your daily life. And again, doing things in moderation and just really focusing on overall health and not not so much just like an image thing and then doing all these crazy things to yourself. Then just by changing a few things, you're going to probably notice, boom, a jump in progress and you're going to start seeing that tummy tighten up and that lower back, that those love handles disappearing. <laughs> Trust me, I know guys, it's not easy, especially when it's a habit. I know it's not easy, you know, old habits die hard. <laughs> So I know how it goes and it's just about being consistent with something and the more you are consistent with it, the more it becomes a part of your lifestyle and then you don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in and dealing with my crippled butt. <laughs> so please like the video, please share it, please subscribe. I love you guys so much. I will see you on the next video. Mwah!